and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Yes, I think I owe you guys an apology for last week's video, especially um, as I didn't get a chance to reply to your comments. Um, the reason being is when I had finished the video on the Friday, I went to upload it and found that Microsoft had, well, we had an upgrade on my laptop which cleared all my video editing settings and um, I couldn't get Windows 10 video um, up and running again so I had to use the new Windows Microsoft number 11 and uh, it said on there that the music was free to use and in the mad dash to get the video up ready for Saturday um, Within an hour or so, I had to take the video down because all the music I said was free is copyrighted. And uh, so I do apologize for that. Um, hence why we had a replacement video, which I think is a little bit better, but it had a few glitches in it with basically copying what I've already copied and um, changing the beginning and ending but uh, yeah I'll try not to let that happen again and spoil your entertainment so once again I do apologize for that anyway the good news is their mugs are off to their owners um, <laughs> one of them is in Canada so that may take a couple of weeks to get there but uh, the other two Steve Harper and John Taylor is in the UK so they should already have them um, already uh, but yeah I think Richard Skelton may have to wait a little bit longer but the post office did say it shouldn't take that long but uh, we'll have to wait and see I'm waiting for a reply hopefully from Richard to let me know that he's got it so right so we haven't got time to do anything on the station this week so I thought I'd have a look at something that um, some of you have commented on in the past um, so let's go and have a look at what I'm going to do so what I'm going to do next is show you a clip of King Street in South Shields in the 1950s now I want you to pay attention to the roads and the lack of white lines. You can see the Odeon Cinema. That big clock on the right it was Grant's, the jewellers. And that was Allen's departmental store van from Leggett. They had two big stores at Leggett. They had none down in, in, in the town area. That's North Street with the Barclays Bank on the corner. And then there was Burton's and Taylor's, as it was known then. But now it's just Burton's. Ahead of us, you can just see the bridge crossing King Street. On the right there was uh, Bins, the Drapers, uh, Bins Departmental Store, Benefit Shoe Shop, Savills, the Record Shop. On the left is Duns the Hatters, selling gents suits and that, all gents clothing. But they're in Queen Street going up towards the King Street with the bins on the left and the post office was on the right. AJ Wares was a high-class departmental store, didn't sell clothes, but it sold all silverware, chinaware and kitchenware. It's a very good store to go into, lovely. Right, so as you've noticed, um, there's not a lot of road markings there's none there's, there's very 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 few if not any um, so that's what we're going to be concentrating on this week before we go into the method and how I'm going to put in the white lines I thought I'd show you some of the roads that we have on the layout which very rarely gets seen uh, here we are we're over at uh, Tyndall Ridge 
and as you can see we've got some traffic and if we look closely we'll probably see some ships on the back scene there we go and uh, yeah this road um, is, is not finished it's um, it's the wrong color it's just too black too dark and it needs to um, grey up a little bit uh, like we've seen in the videos because the, the, the road in the video is quite grey um, yeah what I want to do with that video I'm going to put a link in so you can watch that video because it's over eight minutes long and you get to see um, the, how much traffic was on the road back in the 50s and um, you can see all the trolley buses and you and the guy who's uh, narrate, narrating the video really goes into depth um, as you've just seen so here we are we're at Tang Dock um, station and um, we've got a three-way junction here and um, it's because I can't make up my mind how I want to do the road uh, I've got scribbles all over the place as you can see here but um, as the bus stops there now the road will come round and be a T-junction here and this road goes all the way around to um, this bridge that crosses the road over at South Shields here now this is going to be my version of King Street um, except that um, we've got a depot on the inside <laughs> but um, never mind but there we go so I won't be doing that road um, because it's not 100% finished um, I'd like to come back to this as soon as those two stations are finished um, yeah, so we're going to leave that one for now um, I'm going to put a few lines in here um, to one side so the line will start there and then come to the centre of the road and stop about there because I don't want to overdo it I just want to put just a few lines in because we are talking 1950s and 60s here where uh, the health and safety of implementing these roads took years to um, bring them about and um, yeah so we, we've got a policeman there directing traffic and we've got uh, an arrow there telling which way the drivers have got to go anyway so a few um, white lines mm, yeah I'll probably just put a few in there and uh, as we come further back probably add a few at the goods yard if we turn the camera around might add a few there but that just goes into a back lane so would it need a few there possibly now in that video we've just seen you'll see crossings like this where they've got the metal studs but no beacons and you will see a zebra crossing in that video if you look hard enough you'll see one so yeah they were slowly bringing in the road Health and Safety Act. So yeah, that's what we're going to focus on. So let's go and see how I'm going to do it, or what method I'm going to use to put the white lines in. Here in front of you, I have three ways of putting white lines on your roads. Um, originally that's what I was going to use, I was going to use masking tape um, down the centre of the road, leave a gap and then put another piece of masking tape on and then paint between the masking tape, let it dry then pull the masking tape off and then we have our lines. Um, we have here a Woodlands Scenics um, road striping pen um, I did look at that, um, I still haven't used it yet um, as an idea and then when I was at an exhibition a while back at Getz I seen this idea on the layout but their stripes were 4mm thick but you can get 2mm pinstripes 
by styling stripes. But they put they put it on cars, so I imagine that the ad adhesive for this will be quite strong, and I think it'd be neater looking as well. So I'll try all three ideas, and I'll let you guys make up your own minds. So let's start with painting the road markings on. Um, I'm guesstimating that these are about five foot long. So what I've done is, as you can probably see, I've marked it out on the tape already. Um, 22 millimeters with an eight millimeter gap, and then 22 millimeters again. So there we have 22, 8, 22, 8, and then so on and so on and so on. Um, I'm using the satin white paint. Hopefully it'll leave uh, a little bit of a sheen on the road lights. So I'm not too worried about doing this here because I'll probably just sand it down and then repaint over it because it's just for demonstration. Yeah, I was, I was driving to work this morning and I was looking at the lines and trying to guess to make how long these are. Um, the only way to do it is to get out and get to it, measure and measure them properly. But, uh, but I wouldn't advise you to do that. I'm sure there's a ways and means of finding out how long these are. So yeah, it's... It's a bit time consuming, um, especially if you have to go around a bend or anywhere like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a cheap, cheap way. I mean, those marking pens are, uh, are about 12 quid, I think they are. And there's no guarantee that the pen is going to work because after all it's just a pen it could dry out I mean I've had that pen for ages just haven't got around to doing anything with it until now so we shall let that dry for a little bit and then pull the tape off so that's painting them on I'm just going to remove this tape just in case the paint actually sticks to the tape. I'll just pull that off now. Hasn't uh, been down long. So yeah, you get reasonably neat, neat lines. Yeah. Yep, that works. So let's try this pen. Now it's took an age to get the paint to come through. That's what they, oh, got to be careful, that just comes out in great. Might as well do, we'll just lie the rule down. We put it next to that one we can roughly see where the lines need to go. Right, so 22. Then 8, 22 again. Then 8, 22 again. Then 8. 22 again. Right, um, you've got to be, you've got to have a, a bit more practice at this because at the start and at the finish I've got little round blobs. It's probably the way that the paint has come out rather, rather quickly. Let's have another go. 
see if I can be a bit quicker with it. see there the only trouble with that is can spill a bit of paint so that's the paint pen I suppose with a bit more practice you'll get these lines a little bit neater without the blob at the beginning at the end of each line. Let's try the styling stripes. Um, as you can see you get, you get two lines of two mil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel one of them back. Just going to flip the end up. Slightly. Now I've not used this stuff before. I saw this on a layout, but it was wider than this. It was probably three mil wide, and it looked too wide. So we probably get away with this. So just peel one of them away, get it started. Now the good thing about this is, I think it'll look neater. So what I'll do is I just press that on. A straight line. Oh, it's twisting away. Let's see if we can get that twist out. Now, the thing is, it's covered with some film. I'll pull the film back first. Right. Okay, so it's a, like everything, it's trial and error. Quite sticky. Right, so as you can see, you can shape it any way you want. That's ideal if you've got curved rods, but will it stick to this paint? It will stick to car paint, but will it stick to masonry paint? So here is our trusty rule and then we'll just cut across the tape only and 8mm and then just take that piece out. that piece out of there Right, so here's our three samples. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, marked out the, the ones that I like best. The paint and masking tape, it's, it takes a lot of time um, wise, but I still think it's the cheaper way to go if you've got the patience to do it. And paint pen, that need, you need a lot more practice at it to, um, to get these lines perfect um, without the, the blob start and finish but yeah it's, it's an expensive pen too um, what you pay for a pen you could get these final stripes um, and you get a lot more for it I think um, and it, it looks cleaner um, 
obviously this is just a demonstration when, when I come to do it on the rows I'll probably take a little bit more time um, to get the lines perfectly straight but if you've got a curve in the road it's, it's ideal you can you can twist it or do it without any measuring um, obviously you, you need to measure it to cut it but you, you, you know what I mean you know you won't need to to measure the, the center the centers out accurately but yeah so I think this is the star for me but then again you it's, it's uh, a choice of ideas so let me know in the comments which one you think I'm gonna have a play now I have had a little uh, play as I call it and um, yeah, I'm not sure about um, keeping these lines here, but they are very, very striking, and um, it might grow on me, I don't know. I'll have to stop watching um, Pathé newsreels and things like that, I think. But yeah, it does look very uniformed, um, using the pinstriping rather than painting them and uh, yeah we've got a little bit of a, a giveaway line here I mean is it necessary being next to the yard um, I'll probably get rid of that but um, yeah it's just a, an example of road marking and I think these styling stripes are the way to go if I was to continue marking out these roads um, you get it says there you get 10 meters of striping um, but in reality you get 20 meters of striping because it's a double stripe if I turn that on the edge you get two stripes so it's best to cut what you need and take one strip off at a time bearing in mind it's got protective film on it to uh, make the adhesive probably last longer but uh, there you go if you can't get it from um, your local garage there's castlepromotions.co so you might be able to get it from them but uh, I think I may have mentioned it before I got this from Amazon so there you go, three different ideas of doing road markings and to me I think this looks far superior than paint. We had plenty of comments in the last video about these corner stones or coin stones hope I pronounce that right or parallel step cornerstones and um, here is one example of the cornerstones or coins coin stones that uh, I have on my building all right it's totally different architecture but the theory is still the same um, there's a few more examples here's another one where you have them stepped in between each um, large stone you have a smaller stone so they are out there um, there's many variants of cone cornerstones but uh, yeah, I just thought uh, I'd show you these photos um, another example is this one um, alright you have the unequal or the right angle cornerstones here but here where the arch is they're equal again so yeah it was a good debate uh, I do enjoy the comments and feedback but it's it's a question of design and yeah it's, a, it's more of a question of design and who designed the buildings at the time but uh, the majority of the stones are right angle stones similar to what we've got here where we have 
um, more to one side than more to the other. But yeah, um, it's great having these little debates in the comments. Thanks for uh, for that. Now then, did I manage to turn the lights on in the main station? Well, it took me a couple of evenings to just do the wiring um, to get from the transformer to the control panel and then back to here. So let's have a little look. We'll start with the entrance and hopefully that lamp is still on. Um, transformer I'm using is not very good at the moment. I'm going to have to change that. But yeah, we have the lights on there. And we can see quite a lot of detail in the main hall. Quite a lot of detail in. Um, in the refreshments room, yep, you can virtually see it all. So I think it was well worth doing. Uh, in the waiting room, you can see a figure and the fireplace. And yeah, you can just make out the coffee table there to the to the right. And um, stations master's office. See the lamp. See the telephone on the desk quite easily. Oh, it makes a difference having the light on. But um, yeah, you can see everything going on in there. The secretary. Can't quite make out the type. Oh, you can. You can make out the typewriter. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, we've come to another end of the video. And uh, hopefully next week, we shall start putting up the walls that will run down the platform. These walls have got to continue. But until then, Enjoy your model railways. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.